What is going on guys and welcome back to part two of this truck camper build. So in part one, I got this framing built for the sleeping platform. It's not done, need to add more support and then finish that and we will do that in this video. I also went to the hardware store, got some more rivets and also got two sheets of half inch CD plywood. And as I was walking in the hardware store, I saw these out in the trash can. The little thin sticks and I knew I wanted to make all these ribs on the bed level. And I saw these and thought they would be the perfect thing to use. They said I could have them for free, so I took them. It's not exactly level, but it is gonna help out a lot. So I need to cut these down, throw one right here, and then I plan to throw a rubber mat right here this entire way. And that's just to help with walking or crawling inside the back of the truck. All right, that was easy. Let's go ahead and take out the frame and we can finish that. You need to add a few more pieces of support and then add the foam. So I definitely trust these middle two because they are supported now. I can just stand on it like you just saw, but these braces right here are a little iffy. But I'm hoping once I add the plywood on top of this, I'm kind of banking on this half inch plywood to uh, make all this super sturdy, which I think it will. Next up, I need to add another piece of three quarter angle to the top here, and this is the extra support for the lids. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and add some foam to the face of this side here. This is the side that will be shown, so I want this side to look as nice as possible. I went ahead and added some shims to this area here, one there and one here. And that was just to make it all level with the sides, that way there's no weird drop off in the foam. Got some acetone. Alright, so I got the foam added. Looks pretty freaking good, I must say. That is gonna look a whole lot better than the ugly metal that was on there. But I'm also going to be painting this plywood white. Got some uh, oil-based enamel. This is the same stuff I use on my John boat. If you wanna waterproof any type of wood, oil-based enamel, do three coats and it will not ever fade on you. It will not ever get water rot or anything. So I'm gonna go ahead and paint and slowly work on getting this piece of wood waterproofed. It's probably not a big deal that it's waterproof, but I at least want to get some paint on it to protect it somewhat. Man, it is freaking cold. It is a whopping 20 degrees a day. It's freaking snowing. It's supposed to snow tomorrow too, man. This makes me wish the truck camper was already done and I could drive down to Florida and just fish there for a month. Get out of this cold weather, come back when it's warm and the fishing is actually good. But we got the plywood right here. I got my lines traced, so I'm gonna go ahead and cut this out to make it fit on the box. Ah, oh, my hands already hurt. I was out there for two seconds. Saw so if you die on me, I swear. All right, so I got the top piece cut. It fits perfect, but it still needs more paint. So I'm gonna add another coat of paint to it. I do have the heater going here in the garage. It is warmer in the garage. I don't think it's warm enough to paint, to be honest, but uh, we gotta do it. We gotta get it done. If we wanna travel and truck camp at any time we want, the camper has to be done, so. So I've been in the back of this truck for a few hours now, and the only way I am surviving is because of this heater right here. This thing's amazing, probably my best and favorite purchase ever. <laughs> this is how I survive in the freezing cold. It's like 24 degrees right now. If you go outside, your hands are like done in 10 seconds. It absolutely sucks. But here is what I got done. So I went ahead and drilled all the holes for the rivets. So we got all the rivets in place. So this thing is now secured down to the floor of the truck. It's not gonna move anywhere. We got more rivets over here and then more over here as well. Then we went ahead and got that brace going up right here. 
We got some braces going right here. And then we got a brace over there as well. And then these two braces added. So I think that's pretty much it for all that support on that side. I hope, I'm not really sure. Another bad thing that I just realized, I went to stand up or lean up to drill over there and I put my hand right here and I went to get up a little bit and this bent. So this is not gonna be very strong right here. So instead of having a large box, a small box and a large box, I'm gonna have to put a leg right here. So this one large box will turn into two of these small boxes. That kind of sucks, but uh, it happens. You gotta figure this out as you go. But we got this top right here cut out. Now we need to cut out this here. All right, so I got the two doors piece cut out. And then I also went ahead and made this template of the curvature of the truck bed. Got that traced out. Now we can cut that out and get the painting All right, so I had to make a few more adjustments to this final piece. So over here, I did not take account for this lip right here. So I had to cut out that corner for it to be able to pick up. See what I'm saying there? So now that opens fully. And then we also cut it down the middle to make two doors. She will open up. Boom, I have all that storage. Both of these lids are sitting on its own piece of angle as well. And we can get some paint on these pieces and do a second coat on that piece. <laughs> All right, guys, it was quite the eventful day. Boy, I have made a mess with this camper build. And I gotta say, I'm not really happy with how long this simple little box is taking. I guess it's not really simple, but uh, <sighs> painting is taking forever. And then I just about wasted maybe an hour, maybe even two hours, just making a huge mess and then cleaning it up. Here is the mess I'm talking about. Yeah, look at all this foam. Great stuff. Ignore all that red stuff that's uh, just crayon, all right? Had a little accident. It wouldn't be an Adam Ryan video without me hurting myself, right? But let me show you what I did. So in this truck bed, if you look under these lips, there are pretty decent sized holes. But if you look right there, there's foam. Great stuff foam right there, expanding foam. So I saw these big holes and I figured, you know what, let's just try to shove some great foam in there and see what happens. Let's just say it did not work and I just spent the last hour using a razor and acetone to get all that crap off. I got it all off over here as well, so now we're back to square one. But I was walking through Walmart and I saw this foam. So this is like a pad that you kneel down on or sit on. It's about three quarter inches thick. I just cut it into six pieces and I'm just gonna be shoving this foam into the hole. I will show you how I'm gonna do it. I'm just kind of guessing here. I'm hoping this is gonna work. And this also has like a waterproof outside that uh should help with waterproofing so i'm gonna finish these cuts and then we'll start shoving these pieces of foam inside all these holes so now we have all those holes filled up with foam and that's in there tight too so that's not gonna let any air or dust come through there we got every hole filled up nice and tight i want to insulate this truck as much as i can I did seal off this hole here with the foam. It worked on that spot there. And then it also worked on all these little holes here. I'm still gonna go over all these holes with 5200. And I also need to seal up the crack right through here. I'm gonna run a bead of 5200 all the way down, all the way across to over here, and then up this side as well. In the daylight, I can see all the way through up here, so we need to seal that off. I'm actually thinking about using this spot, though, to run my wires for my solar panel. Now we're back ahead. We got all those holes sealed off. Let's get rid of all this extra pieces. All right, so we got those holes sealed off. I just mentioned we still need to seal off the cracks back there, but earlier I added the seal 
for the tailgate. So we have a seal going all the way around and it fills up that crack all the way around it. So I can shut this and you can watch that gap. That gap closes and now we have a seal going all the way around the tailgate but it is not fully sealed. I can still see light right up in here. So there's like a four inch area that I still need to seal off, but I need to figure out how to do it. If you guys ever sealed off this area of your truck, let me know how you did it. Or if you have any ideas, let me know. The back of this truck is almost completely sealed off. Does the truck look cleaner? I did clean it out a little bit. I wiped it all down with some acetone. It helped a little bit. I went shopping today, picked up a few things. First off, I picked up this mat. And then this to here is all open floor. So I'm gonna put this six foot mat all right there. I will have to cut it down to make it fit. Also got some water jugs. We've got two jugs, they're three gallon jugs. Got these from Walmart. But one will be fresh water, and then one will be for the gray water. Then also went and got this box. So. I need three small boxes. So I really like this box because the corners of it are square. It's not taking up any space. And look at, at this. She is almost a perfect fit. It is just like four inches too small. But man, that was so freaking close to being the perfect size. But it's not, so I'll just have to use this box for something else. And I'm just gonna be making some custom boxes of the wood. That will fit perfectly in there. We can make dividers, it'll be way nicer. And since we're at it, might as well go ahead and build that one too. So that will be in a future video, definitely not in this one. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and seal off that back crack, back crack, and all these holes with the 5200 real quick and then we can start adding. No, and then we can start painting. Ugh, painting sucks, dude. But this is almost done. Oh, also, I drilled all the holes to attach this piece of wood to the sleeping platform. So let's go ahead and shut this. And all I can do now is just paint one last coat of paint on these pieces of wood. And hopefully in the morning it will be dry enough to throw it all together and throw it back in the truck. So I'm gonna get the painting. I'm not gonna film it because you already saw me paint it twice in this video, I'm pretty sure. So yeah, guys, I will see you in the morning. All right, so it is the next morning. The paint has dried, so it is now time to throw all of this back into the truck. All right, so we just got it riveted down all along here on these braces over here. We got it riveted to the wall as well. And man, now she is freaking sturdy. She will not go anywhere. No wiggle, nothing. So that is good. Now we can add the top sheet of plywood. To rivet down the plywood to the frame, I went out and got some way longer rivets. These rivets can hold 3 8 to half inch, and of course this is half inch plywood. So I drilled the 3 16 hole, and then I had to drill about halfway through the plywood for this rivet to be able to hold down the plywood. But that is how the hole looks, and then the rivet goes down inside there, perfectly like that, and then just rivet it on. Pretty simple. Boom, just like that. So that is how the finished product looks. 
I got the lids dropped in, and first thing I noticed is I need to add some finger holes or something to open it up. Uh, another thing too is I bought hinges for these lids. One will be here, one will be there. It'll tilt up. But I'm debating on putting those on because, so I'll have to move the mattress, pick up this lid. Let's uh, see if I can. Pick up the lid, right? And then if it has hinges, it will stay like this. I mean, it may even flip all the way down, but I would really have to move the mattress a lot for that to happen. So what I'm thinking is not doing hinges and just leaving it free sitting. That way I can pick this up, move it out. I guess I still have to move the mattress a lot. Or I can set it on top of the mattress. But uh, I don't know, I think it just seems way easier to access everything that's in here without the lid standing straight up like this. Cause then I have to go up and over the lid. And that might be annoying. I don't know, I'm gonna wait to attach the hinges and I'll let you guys decide if I should add the hinges or not to the lids. Let me know guys in the comments. But let's go ahead and drill some finger holes so I'm not trying to pry my fingers in this little gap. Finger hole. All right, so now we got finger holes. Easily take off the lid. Next up, I need to close off this area here. I already cut me out a piece of metal and added this support here. And that's just gonna sit right in here. I gotta finesse it in there, hold on. That's gonna sit in there just like that. I got some acetone here to clean off all the blue Sharpie. Oh, ignore all that crayon right there. All right, so now we got that face plate installed. We can store stuff in this area here and nothing can fall out. So that is pretty much the sleeping platform. Of course, I still need to make all the drawers, but we'll do that in a future video. But this looks awesome, man. Let's go ahead and grab the mattress and then throw it on top of there. All right, so here is the mattress that I use for camping. I have used this mattress for probably like three years now. I've got a lot of use out of this thing, but this is just a four inch memory foam mattress. It was a queen size that I had on my bed. And then I was like, I was about to throw it away. And then I was like, you know what? I can still use this thing. I cut it in half and it fit inside a sleeping bag. Perfect. And again, this is memory foam. This thing is super comfortable. So it makes camping and sleeping on this thing super easy. Let's go ahead and throw it in the truck. All right, boys, she is perfect. It's probably time to upgrade this sleeping bag, but she'll do for now. I need to go grab a pillow. I don't have a camping pillow anymore. You've probably seen this mattress just floating around in some of my John Boat videos. I know it was under the boat for a while. And I have a few things just floating around for this camper build, like this solar panel. This is a 180 watt solar panel that I had on my Nissan Xterra. This bad boy is going on the truck very soon, along with my Delta 1200 camping battery. So all of that will be added to the truck as well very soon. And like I said, we'll be building the boxes in here very soon as well. But it is a freaking beautiful day, guys. So I'm gonna go take out the boat and go fishing. All the snow and ice has melted and it is nice and warm. Oh, it feels so good to be in the sunlight. I'm gonna clean up this garage and then we're going fishing. I still gotta cut this mat down to size. It's gonna stop about right here. And then this is where the cabinet tree is gonna start. But we still have a lot to do to this truck camping setup. But guys, I hope you all enjoyed the video. Fishing video is coming very soon. If I can catch them, we'll see. <laughs> but I think the next few days are supposed to be nice. So as I'm waiting for all this stuff for the camper build to show up in the mail, I will be out there fishing. So I'm excited about that. But guys, don't forget to like and subscribe and I will catch y'all in the next one. Peace. Bye.